Hello and welcome back to another new project. You lot are going to think I'm absolutely crackers, um, but things just seem to come my way somehow. I have not purposely gone out and gotten this vehicle. It's got problems, but it's exactly, as you all know, what every project I get, it's always at that. Not quite big enough, not quite enough space, not an estate, not this, not that. And I've managed to find something which suits my needs perfectly. But all the vehicles that I see, like this one, are just way, way too expensive for what I think they're worth at the minute. Because they weren't worth that kind of money before COVID. And I'm not paying three and four grand for something that I quite often used to see advertised for 1,500 quid. So, what am I getting? Was a nine-seater. It isn't a van. Well, it used to be a minibus, but now it's kind of like in between. I think I think it's been some kind of a minibus conversion, ex-taxi, like as in airport shuttle, which has then been put to... Well, still got nine seats on the logbook, which I'm going to change to eight. I actually want to change to seven because it no longer has eight seats, I don't think. Let's just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it does, it has eight, but that's including the driver, so there's actually seven passenger seats. Might just change that one. Um, because on my licence, even though I've got my HGV licence, since I passed my test before, before after, 1997, I don't have D1 on my licence, which is minibus. Weird. So I can drive a flipping 44-tonne truck, but I can't drive a nine-seater minibus for private use god knows but anyways that's that but the main thing is it ticks all the boxes for what i need so have you guessed what it is no i'll move back so i can get a, a decent shot when i switch it i wish i could just leave this video here and get you guessing but we'll, we'll see a Vauxhall vivaro otherwise basically a rental traffic or the nissan NV something, or I don't know what they're called, the Cube Star something, anyway, but this is the Vauxhall version, I'm, you'll keep here as referring to it as a Reynolds, and you'll keep here as referring to it as a traffic, and you'll keep saying, down. it isn't a traffic, and it isn't a, um, a Reynolds, it is, 100%, nothing on this vehicle is Vauxhall, apart from the badge, and the clock on the inside, which you'll notice in any kind of Vauxhall, but what do you think, I think it's a tidy looking vehicle, it is perfect for what I want, it's got a nice chrome bull bar on it, with Vivaro on it's probably actually that is pretty sturdy so that's handy to have does make it look a little bit more aggressive it's got the Vauxhall Vivaro written up there not sure deal with the little things first um that may or may not stay I might take that off the windscreen it's just like uh what do you call it a decal thing uh, but yeah nice looking van 09 plate it's got the bits of chrome which have started coming off. I mean, somebody's put these over the mirrors, the chrome things, which are going a bit rough. Um, I'm, I may see if they will come off, but they're okay. But the ones on the door handle, somebody super glued the damn things on. Um, I think I've got some super glue remover. Take these off and just leave them as they should be standard. So yeah, so obviously yeah, they've got the it's got the team Heckle wind deflectors on it. It's got the proper Vauxhall of some kind of alloy wheels. Brakes all look good. Tires are all pretty much new. Slight bit on the inside edge there, which I'll have to get the track and check. Um, so yeah, tidy looking thing. It's got all the, the stripes on it, which I like because it deters it from looking like a van. Because when you've got a van, just put it back to me there. When you've got a van, there's a few issues which a lot of you won't understand at first, but you'll just, you just get what I mean. Number one, if it's a van, you can't go to tips, the t like household tips, because they ask for permits. So this has got windows and markings on it, so it looks good. Number two, they don't like, like you having vans on caravan sites. So if I decide to use this, they'll not let you on. If it was all white with no windows and stuff, which it's got the windows, it's marked up a bit like a camper van. And the other thing is speed limits. When that classed as a goods vehicle, a van, you're restricted to doing 60 mile an hour on dual carriageways and 50 mile an hour on single carriageways. But because this, I believe on the logbook, which I haven't got yet, um, is down as panel van with windows and seats, 
I ate like a minibus, so you're not restricted to the limit. So there's a lot of reasons. Plus, I live in, as you know, like like a, like a newer house, like a 20 year old house, and there's stuff in your deeds saying like I shouldn't really have my caravan on the drive, really. Um, that you're not allowed to have commercial vehicles at the door. This isn't a commercial vehicle because it's classed as a dual purpose vehicle, uh, like a, like a car basically. So yeah, that's that. Anyways, into that one. One final thing I want to point out, even though it's the long wheelbase. The long wheelbase one, which is great. The only way you know these, if they're a long wheelbase, is just this bit right here. If it's got this extended piece from the back wheel to the door, it's long wheelbase. If it's only a tiny bit, maybe it's not much more than that, it's the short wheelbase. They don't really, I don't even think they do a medium wheelbase. It's just long or short. So it's champion and it's got that bit extra space. But straight away, I was worried. Can remember what we talked about the sprinter the other day? Class 7, class 4 MOT. Well, I can't believe it, but it tells you on there, 2,900. It's under the 3,000 kilograms mark. I'll just cover some of the VIN up. There. 2,960. So, I'm over the moon. It's just a standard class 4. No messing about doing class 7 testing. Perfect. So, we'll carry on walking around. It's really quite tidy. Really tidy. It's the odd little blemish. But these things just don't seem to rot as bad is the old transits and stuff like that. Nice at the back. It's had some sign writing done and stuff, which I quite like. It just takes the boring look of a van out of it. Um, brand new with a tow bar on it. That looks like it's been very, very recent with the electrics. Factory fitted parking sensors. No idea off the work. Like I say, all, the, all windows all round. These aren't black panels. So the full back is all glass. Tinted, which is great for having the dogs and kids and stuff in. We'll open the back, we'll have a look. Definitely not had a hard life, as you can see. The only thing is the spare wheel thing underneath is damaged, he said. So, again, brand spanking new tyre on the spare. Huge area here for to have the dogs, luggage, and it's got a third row of seats here. So I'll, I'll show you that more when we're inside. But as you can see, all the windows... Nicely blacked out. So we'll shut the doors. There we go. So perfect for loading the dogs in, nice and low. It's even got the little chrome piece along the step. And along this side. I just want to point something out totally off course here. All these areas here where HGV drivers park up. And I can't help but notice every single one of these that I seem to pull up on where you always see lorries parked are full of random bottles. Beer bottles. Really worrying. I'm not directly pointing my finger at HGV drivers, but not many people sleep in vehicles around these areas at night. It was exactly the same at the caravan site that I stopped at at Durham. Everywhere the vehicles parked up to stop for the tachographs areas, this is where they stop for rest and overnight. It's always alcohol loads of it it's a really weird place i can't imagine somebody would just pull up in a car and sit and drink and chuck stuff out on every single corner really odd not pointing the finger there i'm an hgv driver but i've never really done the overnight stuff but sitting drinking cans of beer every night can't be very good if you're getting up in the morning and driving a 44 ton vehicle but anyways back onto this like i said the chrome mirrors i'm not that keen of them you see all tires Brand spanking new, all the way along. It's got the the protection, and you know fine well when they've been damaged, and it just hasn't been. It's in really good nick. Again, new tyres at the back, and we'll open it up to the front. So obviously it's got the three seats in the front, all in general good condition. The driver's one's got a little bit starting, but it's not bad in comparison. Really quite tidy interior on it. Floors, you look the steps. No major damage. All of, again, dual sliding doors, perfect for car parks. I mean, the floor needs a bit of a wipe, but it's got the, uh, how many is that? The three, four, five seats in the back, which is champion, and all slide and remove, so you can change all the configuration of them to however you want. They've all got three point seat belts on them. Headrests, so it's great. So obviously you've got your three seats here, and your three seats there, so you've got a six seater, seven eight so it's an eight seater and it's great like you know 
they're not in the way, they can be unbolted. There's loads of space down there, loads of space you've just seen in the back, plenty of space there. Jump inside, there's been a TV fitted in it. Up here, uh, the guy's going to try and get us that back. It's got the full LED lighting in the back as well, which I'll show you when we're in the front. And again, it's just a really tidy, nice, clean van. You know, um, I really, really can't complain anything with it. But, yeah, I'll just jump out. And we'll jump inside at the other side. And we'll go through why I'm getting it and how and what's gone on. Because I really didn't need another project. But this one did jump out at us. But we'll just jump inside where I can sit. <sighs> We'll have a quick look here first. Obviously, it's got all the full, uh, like, aftermarket, obviously, uh, sound system thing in. I mean, it's got that's the only part of Oxo that's on this. Um, I think it's switching on there. Pop touch touchscreen, Bluetooth audio. It's got all the speakers in the back. It's got everything you need on there. Air conditioning probably doesn't work. I don't know. Um, obviously, the central lock-in. It's got factory-fitted parking sensors. The only thing I don't like, windy windows. Air conditioning, factory parking sensors, windy windows. Hey ho. She's got a fair amount of miles on her. Like I mentioned, it was an ex um, airport taxi. Wait, not airport taxi, a shuttle bus. 210,000 mile. But this is standard mileage you find on these vehicles. Um, so, yeah, that's enough walking around it. Why have I bought it? What for? What's wrong with it? Well, this vehicle was up for quite a lot of money kind of what it's worth uh somewhere in the region of about three four thousand pound and i was genuinely interested in it even at that kind of price because it just looks smart does the job and most of the vehicles which are similar to this are just going for mega money five ten thousand pound you know upwards of that i'm not into i don't want to spend that kind of money i want something that's like a van that isn't classed as a van, so I can do tip runs without being hassled. I can do the normal 70 mile an hour speed limit. And I ideally want them to be under the 3,000 limit. So it's class 4, which it is. Happy days. Um, but uh, I'm not going to go into particulars. I mentioned the guy's name out of respect. But he, I mentioned, I asked, he advertised this van but with a running fault. And we all know these M9R 2 litre DCI engine. Oh, I should add, it's got no DPF on it. So that's happy days there, straight up. Um, it's a 2-litre DCI engine, brilliant engines, but in these, they suffer big problems. Uh, I'll show you under the bonnet in a minute with what goes on with them. So anyways, he just basically told me, I said on the advert, running fault, and I just asked him, and he said, oh, it's just lacking a bit of power, you know, like, but it drives. He's like, I've done, like, X amount of thousands of miles since I've had it. He genuinely has owned it for quite a while, not just, like, a trade or buying it and selling it. And he explained like what what it was like losing power on hills, just not quite as powerful as what you would think. Um, so I, I just said, look, these stuff have big problems with water going from the scuttle panel down onto the top of the engines and just rotting the injectors and the top of the engine away to nothing. You need specialists to come out to pull the injectors and everything. So anyway, I just more or less said to them, it, it's fine, uh, no problem. Um, I don't know, I'll have to ever think about it at that kind of money uh, in case it's big money needs spent on it, i.e. injectors being removed, body bar. Uh, and he said, oh, it's no problem. He said, does somebody come to look at it? And as it happens, he messaged us back and said it's sold. So I just thought, all right, you win some, you lose some. Kind of thinking in the back of my mind, yeah, I'm kind of glad I didn't spend that sum of money on something that's not running right, um, which could potentially be expensive. So... About, I don't know, a week later or something, uh, I just got a message off him just saying, because I obviously sent him pictures of what I was saying of how bad these can get. Um, saying, oh, um, not being rude, if if you, if you don't want to speak to us, just tell us to bugger off kind of thing. He, he was quite poli polite to us. He said, obviously, you sounded like you knew what you were talking about on the phone. Can I have some advice, please? He, I said, oh, he, I said he's, he's, he was more than polite with us in the first place. He come across as a nice guy on the message. I thought, yeah. I'm happy to help anybody. I just I couldn't be bothered with the message. I just sent the guy my phone number. And he rang us straight away. He says, right. He said, I know you were messaging us about the van. Um, he goes, somebody ha who bought it is ringing us up saying that the engine's not getting this, that and the other. Low compression, blah, blah, blah. 
And I said, oh, right. I said, you did say in your advert that I had a running fault, didn't you? He said, yeah. He says, you read the advert as well as I wrote it, which he did. He said it, it had a fault, a running fault, it, you know. Uh, so he said, the guy's bringing it back. He's threatening legal action, this, that, and that. But I'm like, it was a private sale, genuine seller. I said, you had it written in your advert that it had a running fault. I said, technically, you don't need to give him your money back. His money back, really. Um... But he's like, yeah, but he knows where I live and blah, blah, blah. And I totally get where he's coming from. If somebody's been an arsehole and they're now where you live, the next minute you know your car windows are going to get put through or something stupid like that. And this guy is just a normal, everyday guy like me and everything. He just doesn't want no up, no hassle. He said, look, he's, he's coming now. I'm going to go. I'll ring you back. And basically, this guy brought it back and um, he gave him his money back. But he, I've spoken to him since. He had done over 200 mile in it. There was the TV, like I've mentioned, up there, and he had just realised, as I've took it away, that he hadn't handed it back. Uh, all these seats in the back were in like this when he sold it, and when he got the van back, they were just chucked all over the back, loose. That's not very respectful. If somebody like this guy is good enough, most private sellers would go, plonk, goodbye, on your bike. This guy's totally took the piss. He's done 200 mile in it. He's, he's chucked all the seats around the back he's not handed the tv back that was in the roof um and he's getting all of his money back so he's had a happy day hasn't he but anyways supposedly he has he's had it out to be tested pressure tested and he said that there was low compression on one of the cylinders and i had a look at the engine at the top nothing had been disturbed or moved so i think that was kind of bullshit a bit um but what but the, anyways he got the money back he left the van and this guy says, can you come over to look at the van? I'll pay you, whatever, just so I know what, I'm, what I can do with it. So I says, yeah, I suppose. Uh, so yesterday I went round to have a look at it. It is missing. It's definitely running on three and a half cylinders. Um, but I can't see nowhere that they've had the glow plugs or injectors out to do a, a compression test. Supposedly he said they've had the scanner on and it's come up as a misfire on cylinder three, which is common with these as the, the injectors go. So, I said to the guy, I says, what's your intentions with it? He goes, I don't know. He says, oh, I'm going to have to sell it as spares or repairs, um, trade it in, whatever. But the way it's running, it's, how can I explain? It's like running on three cylinders, basically. Um, it drives perfectly fine, but it's really, there's not much power there. You know, like you've got to kind of give it full beans to get up to any kind of speed. Uh, it's usable. Don't get us wrong. But you wouldn't want to be going too far but he has he's been up and down to scotland just a few weeks ago on it no bother um so anyways cut the chase i'll not bore you uh well i went to look at it i said i says for this kind of money like it's not for me i says i am not willing to take the risk i says cause it could be one of two things quite simply it could be a knackered injector or it genuinely could be low compression on a on a cylinder and with two hundred thousand mile on you ain't even going to waste your time taking the engine apart or getting it redone. You would have to go down the second-hand route. Then when you go down the second-hand route, you don't know if it's a lemon that you're buying. Then you've got to put a new clutch and flywheel in would make sense. You would have to check the condition of the timing chain. You would have to change the injectors over. You would have to do all sorts uh, with it. It gets into a hell of a lot of money. The whole front end off, engine out, labour, blah, blah, blah. And I says, I says, not for me. I says, I haven't got space in my garage, nor the time, and I'm not willing to spend that kind of money unless the van's going it cheap, you know? Um, so I was just quite happy to leave it there, really. Um, but he had mentioned he had been getting prices off. I'm going to name prices, not for my business, but for the guy's business and whoever's watching. Um, but he had been getting prices off. We buy any car and all of it. We buy any van, car, whatever you want to call it. And... He says, look, if I just get that money, what they're offering. Because I told them, whatever they offer you, you'll have to piss about going miles out your way uh, to these places in Newcastle and that. You get there, they start faffing about. And whatever they quote you, they start trying to knock a third off that. I said, just tell us what you want and I'll have a think about it and I'll get back to you. If it's anything good for me, happy days. So anyways, he come back with a price and I thought, yeah, I said, I, that's all right for me. I said, as long as if the thing blows up, I can get me money back to a certain extent of what's on it. There's some valuable bits on it. The bull bars, the tow bar, the, the, the gearbox in these. And actually, the gearbox is nice. Um, the, the sound system thing, the 
lighting, the all, all these seats, the back doors with the windows in are very common for camper van conversions. It is the perfect vehicle to turn into a camper van because the hard work's been done. You just need to bang some interior stuff in it and it's there. You've got all your windows cut out, done, doors. It's the long wheelbase one. It's everything you want, basically. So, yeah, we did a deal. And my way I'm going to deal with this is very simple. I'm going to run it because it drives all right. For where I go, if I need to go further afield, the unsung hero of the fleet, the Astra, that's what we're going. If I want a bit of local driving around, a bit of fun, got me Jeep. The ML's just to tow the caravan, you know that. So this is the perfect running about vehicle. With the dogs, I've got, I can fit the dog cage in there, prams, bikes, scooters, boh, you name it. <laughs> Loads of space in the back of there. So this is going to be perfect for just going to Morpeth for the day. Going to... Uh, Front burn where we go up in the hills and stuff. Maybe struggle on a few of the hills, but they're quiet roads. Um, local driving. You know, just out with the dogs, flitting about, happy days, having it at home, tip runs, which I've got a lot to do. Example, where I've just borrowed that Sprinter, having it as, as a works van at the garage, just to run about with at work. Bang loads of stuff in the back. Wheels, tyres, you name it. Happy days. So my intentions with this, I know there's something off on a cylinder. Like I said, inject that or a piston, the compression, i.e. the engine. But the price I paid for it, it's worth it. I, I can run it, if the engine goes bang, happy days, I'll just get another engine, bang it in, see one of my pals at a different garage where there's more space, work one night late, stick a second-hand engine in the thing, happy days. But that's the extreme. What I might do when I get time, I'm going to buy some little Noid testers first to check each injector is getting the right feed. Then if I know that's right, I'm going to plug the computer in and check the the values, the injection quantity. And if it picks out one of the injectors, is way off all the others. It could just be a duff injector. But these suffer big problems, which I'll get to now. We'll jump out. Um, unfortunately, this one doesn't look good. These have an issue where water comes down here in the scuttle and goes straight into the top of the engine and sits there right on top of the injectors and the, by God, these get in a mess. Sometimes you need to get take the heads off them and everything. Um, I'm just, oh, sorry. I, I, I'm going to have to pause the video. The handle snapped off for the, um, you want to use just a pair of pliers just to pull the thing. So I'll just pause this and I'll come back to you. So here we go. The main problem is, yeah, when I showed the guy, all of the drainers are blocked. So this is filling the water, and it's all cascading over here. But, the biggest problem here now, is can you see all the water down there? The only thing I will say, is the injectors are not looking rotten to pieces, thankfully. Because a huge issue here is massive, massive, massive rot. And the injectors weld themselves into the head, and you can't get them out. Now I'm looking in there, and it's not looking too bad. I just don't know if there is water down there. I just don't know if somebody's been in there and they genuinely have done a compression test or if they haven't. I don't know. I can't prove it. Without me getting it properly compression tested, I don't know. So it could have a duff engine in it. But it drives and it runs and if the engine's duff, I'll just run the damn thing that blows up. I don't care. I've got breakdown cover through the bank. As long as I can get the vehicle to a safe position, if I've got the kids in the car, you can break down in any car. So... That's my intentions for now. Noid test them, check there's no bang with the wiring. Then attempt to remove the injectors, send them away to get tested. Actually, no, check the metering values of the injectors while it's running with the diagnostics. Then if I find it, it, it duff, I'll remove that injector, send it away and get it reconditioned or get a new one. Then might get it running right. That's still two, three hundred quid. Then, if not, it's going to be the engine. If the injectors all pass the test, it's going to need a new engine. But with these, you just take the whole front end off. So bulbar, bumper, the whole thing comes off, radiators out, off, and you've got that whole area to work in. You bang them in, job done. I'm not saying it's as easy as that, not by a country mile. But I'll speak to one of my pals. If they want some money in their back pocket doing it on the fiddle, I'll see them. It's just trying to source one of these engines without all the injectors welded into the head. But this doesn't look too bad fingers crossed i've only just had a look there um so yeah there we go i'm gonna leave it there short 
I wish I'd, uh, that was force of habit and I apologise, not a short video, it's 25 minutes, but let us know what you think, do you absolutely hate it, please just be honest and say, do you love it, do you think, I mean to be honest for what I've paid for it, I would happily sink nearly a thousand pound into it if it meant getting it up and running properly, I would, and that's probably what you'd be looking at to get a half decent engine, new clutch, flywheel, maybe a timing chain, but the beauty is with this M9R engine, it's in everything. It's in all of the uh, Lagunas, Megans, Espas, Renault, uh, all the Nissan range, the Qashqais. It's in a lot of vehicles. So you're not just... The ancillaries on it are different, but they'll all interchange over. So you could, I think, I hope, I need to double check, you probably get a low mile out of a Laguna that's been smashed or something with like 50,000 mile on and bang a nice low mileage engine in. Happy days. Um, must admit, I put my hands up fully. I've not been involved with swapping and changing engines around since very, very early days of starting out. As you see in our garage, we ain't got the space for dead vehicles, let alone a huge thing like this. Um, so I tend to not get that involved with that. But we'll get into that more as the project progresses. Let us know what you think. Shall I keep it? Do you wish I hadn't bought it? Should I sell one of my other vehicles to get some money? Because that's an option I've got. If it genuinely does need an engine, I haven't just got a thousand pounds sitting in my back pocket. I can just go poof like that and spend it. I would have to sell them. What do you think I should sell? Because here is out. Brand new tow bar. It will tow the caravan. And the beauty is I've got to have all this usable space. So when the caravan's parked up, on the night time before we leave, I've got all the space in this van to put all our belongings. But that Mercedes ML owes me next to nothing and it tows the caravan spot on. Absolutely spot on. Automatic, nice big torquey engine, great. This, remember, it is a big vehicle, but it's still got a little pitly two litre engine in, um, out of a car. And it has got 200,000 mile on, even on the gearbox, if I get another engine. And it actually can't tow nowhere near as much as my uh, Mercedes. The Mercedes can tow three and a half ton. I think this is rated at about 2,000 ton. 2,000? 3,500 kilos, which is three and a half ton. This is rated at roughly about 2,000 kilos, which is two ton. My caravan, I reckon, is topping about 1,700 kilos. So even my caravan will be maxing this thing out. So it would be a nice idea to get rid of the ML and keep this in its space. But I'm, I'm really reluctant to sell that car because touch wood, it has never let me down. It is uber reliable and all it, you, all it costs me to, to keep that vehicle is an MOT every year and to tax it for six months of the year per month. That's it. They don't cost me no more. I don't pay insurance and nothing like that. Um, so it's worthwhile keeping that because if this van, I'm, I'm not fully trustworthy of this yet until I've used it more where I fully trust that Mercedes. I just know when I hook that caravan up unless something severely goes pop that vehicle will get me to my destination with the caravan and like i mentioned the caravan's 15 to 17 kilo thousand kilo it can tow three and a half thousand three and a half thousand yeah three and a half thousand so the caravan's not even pipping half of what the merc can tow the caravan's nearly pushing the max what this can tow so naturally the only other option is sell the jeep I've got the wheels still at the alloy wheel place now getting redone I've just sank about two or three over th 350 quid into that thing just in the last week new tire wheels getting done mats fucking everything so i'm not um i'm not that keen of selling that unless somebody wants to make us a good offer on it you know how good that is you will not find another cherokee in that kind of condition what i've everything i've done to it and i've got a lot to upload to what i've done to it yet probably that would be an option sell the cherokee to build the funds to get this thing running right and then I'll have the ML for towing the caravan, and this is my everyday driver. But the Cherokee, nice heated seats, this hasn't got. Cruise control, this hasn't got. Air con, ice cold, this has got air con, but probably doesn't work. So, hmm, slightly not too sure about I want to sell the Cherokee. But what do you guys think I should do? Think I should just keep the Cherokee, keep the, keep the Jeep, move this on? Do you think it's too much hassle, too much time? The only thing is it's usable. When something's blown up and it's totally knackered, you are knackered, you can't use it for anything else. This is working, it still works, till I start pulling it to bits, which is what I don't want to do. I want to see how long I think it'll run for. 
Um, so yeah, let us know. Leave leave a comment. Totally, just be honest with your thoughts. I'll leave this one here, and I will be back when I have, when I've got more content to do on it. When I'm starting to pull it to bits and try and do a bit of research, a bit of investigation to see if I, if it's the engine that got, or see if it's the injectors or whatever. So I'll leave this one here. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like, leave a comment, and if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe. Bye.